Okay, so welcome. We are in our styling warehouse. This is where we keep all of our samples of products. We shoot everything. And um, I am really excited about all of our new product. So this is one, it's been a while since I did a live. So excited about that. But I'm also excited about this new format of being able to just talk to our designer community. I think that um, having that connection is so cool to me. I think that there's so much that I take from my experience working with clients and apply to our product design and um, really try to envision the products in um, multiple different environments because I know you all have your own sense of style. And um, although these are from a Miggy perspective, the hope is that they transition really well from home to home. Um, I'm gonna walk you through all of our products that we have lined up here today. They're the ones that um, I just cannot wait to show you. And then we'll be gathering questions and at the end I will answer, um, answer a few. So I'm gonna start off with this Georgina chair. This is a dining chair and it is in uh, this really pretty fawn velvet color. And there's a lot to love about this. One, the shape is gorgeous. Two, it is on casters, which makes it so nice to move in and out of a table. And they, you can see how easily this moves. And we tried to establish a sit that was compact enough to sit around a table uh, with room, but also wide enough that people feel comfortable when they get this hug on the back. I wanted it to go all the way to the floor so we could um, get this like elongated effect and then have this really subtle pleat detail across the back. Um, it just takes it to that next place and it feels really solid and nice. I'm gonna take these casters and move this over here. I am so particular about faux greenery and I'm really excited about this Japanese quince tree we developed. It took us quite a few samples to get the leaves delicate enough. There's variation um, in the sizes and I really wanted it to feel imperfect so it feels more natural. You see how how nice this is. You've got good height, some kind of spacing between the branches to really give it that natural effect. And then the pot is really beautiful. It has this kind of rib texture and um, there's even moss already in it. Next to the Japanese quince, I have our Stratford desk. And this is, uh, it's really pretty color. It has this kind of like dark inky tone to it. And we have applied the paint to a wood grain finish. So you aren't just getting a smooth um, paint finish, you're getting smooth with that grain showing through. And then we have a double drawer here that has this like drop pole. And I love that it has this kind of like little ball detail on the drop pole. And one step further, nice tapered legs and this cute little back detail that wraps around. It's these things that I obsess over. Instead of just having a flat desktop, I wanted to take it um, just a step further and add this subtle detail. This is our Montague lamp and the texture and movement on this lamp is really great. It's imperfect, it is organic and we get this kind of nice curve and then you get this like beige and grain kind of like gray multi-tone effect. And I love a tapered shade. We get that soft white tapered shade. In front of me, I have our Rafferty Ottoman. This is a piece that I have been dreaming up for a while. I sat, I was at a restaurant and the table had this like clipped corner and I just started talking about it with Sid and he's used to me kind of rambling about things like that. And I filed that away, clipped corners, detail that I like. So you'll see it on our Orville extension table um, that's already at McGee & Co. 
and it has those clip corners. And then I thought, well, why, why haven't we applied an interesting shape to a large ottoman? We see the round, we see the rectangular shape, but let's clip these corners so that it gives people a nice way to flow around the ottoman. And also it keeps it interesting. So we did, um, it's a performance linen and then it has this cocoa brown piping around the edge. And then I wanted to have this stripe effect through the piping and not the fabric itself that's all over. And so we have this little channel detail going all the way down and I think it's so cute. This comes in um, multiple sizes as well. Then behind me, our Highgate bookcase. This has been um, something I wanted to do for a while. This really great height here. Instead of having a tall bookcase or a console, this height is really a nice way to break it up because all over the house, you get kind of like two options for height, right? Table height, maybe tall. And this is great because you're getting some a substantial height, but the length is narrower enough that you can fit it anywhere. And also it allows you to style above if you want a little mirror or like layer some artwork. Uh, for fall at our photo shoot, we actually even put a little lamp on the top and it looked really sweet. I plan to style this in all the in-between places that I can. So at, an in, at the end of a hallway, when you have that blank space or um, narrower wall spaces, there are a few details to point out here. So you have this really pretty kind of like bone white color, this like curved corner, and then this leg that goes all the way down to a taper. This hardware, so cool. You get, um, it's painted all one color, and then you get this kind of depression here, and then this little tapered knob, and then the inside's the best part. We have everything on a soft close on this, so it, the experience is really nice to open. And then we did this cocoa brown color on the inside and it is absolutely incredible. You're getting this moody, rich depth and it's so beautiful to style things up against that color. We have different, um, we have like the marks so that you can lower and raise the shelves to the height that you need for styling. Above this, we have our Enola vase. And it has this great like turned texture and I think a large white textural vase goes anywhere. Up next, we have our Baxter dresser. So this dresser is really fun. I love that the knobs are wood so that when you are picking the coordinating pieces in the bedroom to be mix and match, you can do a metal hardware on the nightstand, or if you choose the nightstands from this collection, you could do vice versa on the dresser. Um, we worked really hard to get this finish. It is so matte. So it has zero shine to it and it feels so smooth. Um, it has a really subtle curvature on the corner and then the leg detail is great. I love that it has a little bit of a more modern look, but you see when it's sitting next to something more traditional like this Highgate bookcase, it totally works. Um, but it does add a little bit more of that like modern juxtaposition to um, the assortment, which I'm excited about. Over here, this is our Wyndham lamp and it is an iron base and I love, I mean, we know scallops are trending right now. We know that like kind of this like wave undulating effect in metal is um, something we're seeing a lot. I wanted to do it in a way that didn't feel so trendy, but it was enough that you're getting that look and one that can last for many years to come. So you get this really beautiful finish. It's a more like a soft black. And then it has this little ball kind of detail here. And then this really cute wavy leg. I like that this is narrow and compact enough to sit next to an accent chair 
or um, next to a sofa as an accent lamp really nicely. This cutie little side table is called Bisbee. And I, in fashion, in interiors, we're seeing red and deep browns come back in a really big way. And if you're not ready to go all, all in on that look, an accent table is the way to incorporate it without it overpowering your entire room. You just get this punch of color. And I worked really, we worked really hard to get this color so that you're getting a reddish brown, but it's subdued enough that it can work with a wide variety of colors. Um, and it's got this high gloss sheen and I love to mix and match as you know. And so you get this like high gloss sheen next to really matte finishes and it's a really nice contrast. Next to me here, I have our Rufus console table. This is made from reclaimed elm. And so nothing else can replicate that really beautiful reclaimed wood texture. And you see that evident here. It has this really beautiful texture on the top and these eased kind of edges and you get really great connection points on the bottom. This is like ideal entryway, back of sofa, um, hallway, there's so many applications for a rustic console table like this. And I use a rustic console table in every single one of our projects in some way. And this like check all the boxes for me. I'm really excited about this piece. Tess, so we launched Tess in the dark green, um, maybe a little over a year ago. And it is one of our most popular um, lamps. The shape is just so cute and it works in a lot of different ways. And while we're doing this in this kind of like putty color here, it's a very matte finish. And then it has this cute little um, antique brass finial on the top. Okay, so I have up next the Rosario taper holders. So I love taper candle holders. I have to kind of almost restrain myself from using them everywhere because I love tapers. Uh, I was um, really inspired by antique twisted iron. You'll see that in details um, in all sorts of lighting and accessories. And then I went to Spain on our vacation and it confirmed my love for the twisted iron details. And I love that you just get that subtle hint of it here and you get this rustic texture on the metal um, and they work with everything we've already used them like multiple times in um, upcoming project styling up next i have our blanche picture frame we launched this in brass and people went nuts over it it is i love a little frame i think that they look so sweet on a shelf or a nightstand dresser um, and this one has these really cute little ball feet and we have it in the brass i love pewter i think it's one of the most complementary metals for um, pairing with a brass and it's nice that it's like more matte subdued than like a polished chrome or a nickel and it pairs well with warmer tones really nicely um so i've got this here and this is next to our purcell match holder so this is a is a marble and i love this next to a candle on a coffee table it's just like that great object that last object that you need to kind of like add some height and some layer and it has the little striker on the bottom as well which is really convenient these are um, our natural fabric boxes. I, I mean, I think we, as designers, you know, you always need a box on a shelf or on a console or dresser to add that height when you're tired of using the coffee table books. You're like, I gotta break this up a little bit. And I love that these are linen with this antique brass and then they add extra storage as well. And then you can even see, I mean, this is like, you could put jewelry in here. It's a really nice lining to it. Okay, a few more things. I have our Idris vase here, and I love the color on this. It's really warm, um, and it has this really pretty kind of spaced rib throughout. What 
is so cool about this vase is that it's not just one sheen. We have this dipped effect on the glaze. And so you get this kind of swoop from um, the gloss to the mat. This would look good alone or um, with branches in it. I even used this before we launched it uh, in my parents' bonus room on that console there. And I didn't put anything in it, I don't think. And it looks, it looks beautiful. Um, okay, last. We're getting, um, everybody is so, everyone on our team is very excited about these planters. These are the Clio. Um, they're terracotta and they come in two sizes. Larger one has these handles and they have a drainage hole in them. And I think that these, if you're wanting like that more formal traditional look, having two symmetrical with the handles on either side of your porch would be great. But I also love these two sizes paired together. It's a kind of a dark gray, and then it has this more rustic kind of white um, effect happening throughout. Okay, so that's all of my love for our pieces, but I also know that you have some questions, so I'm going to answer those as well. So one of the questions is, what type of bed would you style with the Baxter collection? So I feel like because this has um, an oak finish, what I would try to do is do a fully upholstered bed. Um, any style that is pretty clean, I think it could be a channel, it could be just a square, it could be even like an arc. I think that just having it be fully upholstered is a no fail approach to making sure that that wood tone works with the bed. The next question is, what's the key to making something both trendy and timeless. Well, for me, when I'm um, visualizing product and how it comes together, I think that you can push forward the design with trendy subtleties, but if you go totally overt on every single detail and the fabric and the size and the finish and all of those things, you're gonna get over it. So we push it in subtle ways so that you get that trend and you're thinking forward in your designs, but we want to think about, I'm always thinking like, how long is this going to last style-wise? And so we always take that into account when we are designing. Um, another question is, where would you style the high gate? I think I answered this when we were walking through, but for me, it's any extra little vignette that you have. It could be in the corner, um, of your living room, or maybe it's at the end of the hallway. Um, I also think that this would work really well in an office space and uh, could be styled also in a dining room, like display your dishes or display your books. But I think that that's um, how I would approach. Um, there's so many different ways to use uh, this bookcase here. Yeah. Um, oh, okay. What would you say to a client that is nervous about incorporating pieces with rich color into their space, like the Bisbee table? Well, I, when I'm trying to convince a client to go for something that's a little bolder, especially if it's in um, color, with color, I, I'm thinking, well, how is this going to impact the entire room? I'm not asking you to paint all of your walls this reddish brown color, but this accent is going to be forward thinking and it's going to add that little punch that the room needs. And uh, this tone is subdued enough, it's not so loud that it can work with a lot of other um, neutrals. And so that's, that's how I would approach it. I always try to tell people like, Let's do this, if, if you're scared to go all in on the look, let's just do it in a small accent. And I think you're going to be surprised at how much you love that bold choice. Okay, so thank you all. This was, this was fun. We are so excited to be able to do these lives and for the designer trade community to join us. Check your inboxes really soon because we will be giving designers early access to shop these pieces.